November 4th, 2025. A calm evening in Louisville, Kentucky. A UPS MD-11 freighter tail number, November 259 Uniform Papa lined up on runway 17, right at the company's massive world port hub. Within seconds of rotation, something went horribly wrong. Fire erupted under the left wing and the number one engine tore clean off the airplane. The jet barely cleared the perimeter fence before disintegrating across an industrial complex. Three crew members and several people on the ground lost their lives. Modern airliners are engineered to survive a single engine failure that's Aviation 101. Yet this aircraft collapsed almost immediately after liftoff. So tonight we're breaking down why that happened, the structure, the systems, and the clues investigators are already uncovering. Let's start with what we know from hard data and on-scene evidence. This was a 1991-built McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, a freighter version of the old DC-10 design. UPS Flight 2976 was scheduled from Louisville to Honolulu, a long Pacific leg, meaning the aircraft was heavily fueled carrying tens of thousands of gallons of Jet A. At about 5.15 p.m. local time, the crew was cleared for takeoff on runway 17, right nearly 12,000 feet of pavement. Airport CCTV later captured a bright flash under the left wing right as the aircraft rotated. Almost immediately after liftoff, the MD-11 climbed to roughly 175 feet above the ground, then began to drift left of the runway centerline. Seconds later, it slammed into warehouses and truck yards just beyond the airport boundary igniting a half-mile-long inferno. When investigators walked the runway, they found something chilling the aircraft's entire left engine along with pieces of its cowling sitting on the right side of the runway near the 2,000-foot remaining marker. That discovery meant only one thing the engine had detached before the aircraft left the ground. In other words, the crew was airborne with a gaping hole in the left wing and a fire that was already out of control. From a system standpoint, that's catastrophic, not just because of lost thrust, but because the engine pylon houses fuel, hydraulic, and electrical lines feeding the rest of the aircraft. When that structure fails, you're not just losing power, you're slicing through the airplane's nervous system. And that's the scenario Flight 2976 faced in the first 10 seconds of flight. The NTSB has since confirmed what early footage already suggested the number one engine separated during the takeoff roll. But the big question remains why. Right now, investigators are considering two main possibilities. First, an uncontained engine failure. That's when internal components, turbine blades, or discs explode outward through the engine casing. Those high-energy fragments can punch through the pylon and wing like shrapnel slicing vital lines and igniting fuel. The second theory points to a pylon structural failure. The pylon is the assembly that physically attaches the engine to the wing. It's built around load-bearing pins and joints, one of the most critical being the rear clevis pin. If that connection fractures, the engine can separate under its own thrust and aerodynamic load. This isn't a new concern. Back in 1979, American Airlines Flight 191A DC-10 suffered a nearly identical failure out of Chicago O'Hare. The pylon broke away during takeoff, severing hydraulic lines and retracting the left wing's slats, the airplane rolled inverted and crashed within seconds. After that, regulators required design changes, including reinforced pylon structures and a special component called a fuse pin. Now, a fuse pin is supposed to work like a mechanical safety link. It's designed to shear off cleanly during an extreme overload, so the engine drops straight down without tearing up the wing. But that system only works if everything else fails in sequence. In the UPS case, it looks like something far more violent occurred. The engine didn't simply fall. Evidence suggests it launched upward, possibly over the wing, before landing on the opposite side of the runway. That motion tells investigators the pylon didn't fail the way it was supposed to. It didn't detach neatly, it ripped free, taking critical systems with it. And that sets the stage for the chain of events that followed. Here's where the physics of flight meet the brutal limits of redundancy. Under certification rules, large jets like the MD-11 must be able to take off safely if one engine fails at the worst possible moment, a speed called V1, the go, no-go point. Past that speed, the crew is committed to fly. Stopping isn't an option. The aircraft should still climb away on the remaining engines, but UPS-2976 didn't. It lifted off, climbed only a few hundred feet, and then sank back toward the ground. That tells us the failure wasn't just one engine. 
The loss of the number one engine alone shouldn't have been fatal. Every MD-11 is designed to handle that. But when that engine separated, it likely tore through hydraulic and electrical conduits, disabling key systems and sending debris into the tail-mounted number two engine. That second engine, positioned at the base of the vertical stabilizer, would have been directly in line with any fragments or flames from the left side. Early reports suggest it suffered a compressor stall, essentially a disruption in airflow that makes the turbine lose thrust and sometimes belch fire from the exhaust. If that happened, the aircraft instantly dropped from three engines to effectively one, the right-wing engine alone. And at that point, no amount of pilot skill could save it. A fully loaded MD-11 trying to climb on a single engine while dragging asymmetric thrust hydraulic damage and a raging wing fire is simply outside its performance envelope. The crew had only seconds between recognizing the failure and impact. What makes this so tragic is that the aircraft was doing exactly what it was built to do, accelerate, rotate, commit to flight when the entire left side structure betrayed them. Redundancy only works if the damage stays contained. In this case, it didn't. When that left engine tore away, the damage didn't stop at the pylon. It triggered what's known in aviation as a compound systems failure, multiple independent systems breaking down at once. First, the fuel. In an MD-11 electric boost, pumps in the center tanks keep steady pressure flowing to all three engines. When the left lines were ripped apart, those pumps kept doing their job, pushing fuel into an open, burning wound on the wing. Instead of being contained, the fuel acted like a blowtorch feed, keeping the fire alive, even as the aircraft climbed. Next, the bleed air system. This is compressed, super hot air taken from the engines and used to power cabin pressurization, de-icing, and other pneumatic functions. If those ducts were severed when the pylon broke, they could have pumped air over 1,000 degree Fahrenheit straight into the flames. That's like turning on an industrial hairdryer in the middle of a fire. It doesn't just burn, it accelerates. And then comes the hydraulic fluid. Most people don't realize it's flammable too. The MD-11's three hydraulic systems use highly pressurized fluid to move flight controls. A ruptured line sprays that fluid under thousands of PSI. In a high temperature environment like this, those leaks can literally ignite spreading fire into the wing cavity. All this heat and damage didn't just destroy structure, it probably crippled the aerodynamics of the left wing. The MD-11's leading edge slats, those panels that extend forward during takeoff to increase lift, depend on hydraulic pressure to stay deployed. If the system number one lost pressure, those slats could have sagged or retracted on their own even partially. That subtle change is deadly at low altitude. The left wing loses lift, first begins to roll and the pilot can't stop it because the control surfaces themselves are already compromised. Investigators are now analyzing security footage frame by frame to see if the left wing slats appear retracted compared to the right wing ones. If they did, it would echo the same aerodynamic trap that brought down American 191 more than four decades ago, proving that under the wrong circumstances, even a redesigned system can still fail the same way. Let's take a step back from the flames and talk about the airplane itself because the MD-11's history is half the story here. This aircraft isn't new tech. It's a stretched descendant of the DC-10, a jet born in the late 1960s. After the Chicago crash in 1979, engineers reworked the engine pylons, reinforced their attach points, and installed check valves to stop hydraulic fluid from bleeding out if a line ruptured. In theory, those improvements closed the door on the kind of cascading failures that doomed Flight 191. But over the decades, a new problem has emerged age. Most MD-11 flying today are pushing 30 to 35 years old. They've been converted to freighters flying long hours with heavy loads in and out of cargo hubs every night. Structurally, that means thousands of pressurization cycles, vibration, fatigue, and exposure to temperature extremes. Even microscopic cracks can spread around high-stress areas like pylon mounts and hydraulic brackets. That's why the FAA has repeatedly issued airworthiness directives basically mandatory inspection orders for the MD-11 and DC-10 families. In 2006 and 2007, new AD required detailed checks for corrosion and metal fatigue around those very pylon connections. And Boeing, which inherited the MD-11 after merging with McDonnell Douglas, has continued releasing service bulletins, the latest ones as recent as 2023, calling for replacements or reinforcements of certain brackets and fittings. So what's the big question now? 
Whether this particular airframe had hidden structural fatigue that went undetected, or whether maintenance procedures, though, compliant simply weren't enough for a jet that's been working non-stop for three decades. The NTSB will comb through UPS's maintenance logs inspection intervals and compliance reports to find out. If fatigue did play a part, this accident might force regulators to rethink how long freighter conversions should stay in service. These airplanes have carried global logistics for years, but metal doesn't care how reliable the brand is. Time load and vibration eventually win. Now that the fire's out and the wreckage is being analyzed, investigators are entering what's called the factual phase, where every piece of data gets mapped to a timeline. Both black boxes, the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder, were recovered. Their Harris L3 units heavily scorched but built to survive up to 2,000 degree Fahrenheit for an hour. Those devices will reveal the engine parameters control inputs and even the final words of the crew. Early ADSB data already gives a rough picture a normal takeoff roll, sudden loss of thrust, brief climb, and then an unrecoverable descent. ATC audio is short and tense, no mayday, no extended dialogue, just a few seconds of radio noise before impact. That silence tells you everything the crew was fighting for their lives from the moment the failure hit. From here, NTSB analysts will examine whether the engine separated cleanly or explosively, how the pylon fractured, and what structural stress marks appear on the attachment fittings. Metallurgy labs will inspect the broken parts for fatigue signatures, microscopic beach marks that reveal years of stress buildup. But the investigation's impact will stretch far beyond one flight. Expect regulators to call for fleet-wide pylon inspections on every remaining MD-11 still flying cargo, not just at UPS but at FedEx Western Global and any smaller operator still running the type. They'll also revisit industrial zoning around airports like Louisville, where logistics hubs crowd right up to the departure path. When something this big goes wrong at rotation, there's no buffer zone, and that's how ground casualties multiply. In the end, this tragedy highlights a hard truth about aviation safety systems can only protect you if failures stay isolated. The MD-11 was built to handle one engine loss, even a fire, but Flight 2976 lost far more than that. It lost thrust hydraulics and structure all in one violent instant. When aging metal extreme heat and sheer mechanical force collide, even the most redundant design can unravel. That's the brutal reality investigators are facing, and it's why this case will redefine how we think about the safety of the global cargo fleet. Okay, that's for now. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and subscribe. We'll break down every new discovery as the investigation unfolds.